Hello, uh, this is a short video uh, on Azure DevOps Flaky Test Identification and Reporting. Uh, to begin with, uh, I think we all know what a good unit test is or should be or the properties of a good unit test. So this is, this is straight from Stack Overflow. And if you see one of the main things or main properties of a good unit test is that it's repeatable. Uh, a good unit test would produce the same result each time and would not be relying on uh, unpredictable parameters, say, for example, the network uh, or, or, uh, or infrastructure, which may or may not always be available. Uh, but at the same time, it is in real life, we always have integration tests, which we always say dependent on the network and they would uh, likely be unpredictable. And hence, we have a need at times uh, to have tests which are we need to rerun to get it to pass. But ideally, we would identify these tests as flaky and hopefully rewrite it in a way that they're more predictable and deterministic. To begin with, uh, so this is uh, the GitHub code that we'll use. Uh, I'll share this link uh, at the description of this video as well as the blog post. Uh, if you see, there are two unit tests and the very simple unit tests. One of them is deliberately flaky one. It gets a random number and asserts that the number random number is divisible by five. Uh, very silly, but it, that's, a, that's a flaky test. It won't uh, give the same result every time. The other one is not a flaky test, which is just asserting that zero is actually equal to zero. And... Uh, that test is there just to show that in the demo, Azure DevOps identifies only one of them as a flaky one. Uh, going into Azure DevOps, let's now create our pipeline. So we'll create new build pipeline. And we will go into GitHub because that's the one uh, we're going to use. It should list my GitHub projects. It has now, so I pick the flaky test demo. Uh, it is complaining because uh, the project is uh, private, but the repository is public. That's uh, fine by us. We'll just use this one as it is. Um, I, I already have a YAML file uh, on the GitHub account, on the GitHub repo. Uh, to going through the steps, if you see, it's a very simple test of building the solution. Uh, the targets it does, the MS build targets, is MS build restore uh, is same as NuGet restore to resolve all NuGet packages. In this case, uh, the project has a new unit um, and then does a rebuild. We're going to VS test. So after the build, it does the test. Uh, in the test, if you see the last four parameters, these are our main points of interest. We will go slightly into detail of that while this project is building. So all I'm going to do is run so that it starts building for you straight away. While it's building, let's go into Visual Studio test task documentation uh, on Microsoft documentation website. So this is the uh, VS test is the task that we use uh, in our YAML file for the Azure DevOps build. And scrolling down to the end, the last four that we were talking about is here, the rerun failed test. So if this is true, then if tests fail, it will try rerun them. And we can control conditions around that, like on the basis of what do we want to rerun it? Say, if uh, if we set it, say, to the number of tests, so by default, it is set to the test percentage, but we could change it to best on, based on test failure count. So we can say, like, if the failure count is uh, five or less then rerun but if it is more than five go mark it as a failure as then do not try to rerun anymore we can also say how many attempts we should do for reruns in this case three is the default we can change it to five attempts if we want two attempts if we want up to us uh, the other bit is the rerun percentage uh, threshold uh, so if we change the person so if we stick to the default one of having test failure percentage, then threshold 
can we say 30% of tests if we get 30% failure or more we do not rerun if it is less than 30% then we rerun those tests and try to get it to pass uh, going back to our build let's see it has built and if you see the test has been marked as failed but the build has passed so if we go into the log you will see that when it started test execution in the first turn it failed and it says completed test execution but it will rerun the failed tests and during this rerun our flaky test has passed and as a result the overall test has uh, well the test run has been marked as a pass it also highlights that some tests have failed and it has rerun them and if we go into the test reports it doesn't mark any as failures but if we go into and clear it you can see that this test has been marked our deliberately flaky uh, test has been marked as flaky this is one way of identifying and reporting our flaky tests uh, going back uh, to the deliberately flaky test this uh, feature is controlled from the project settings so if we go back to the project settings test management this is where flaky test detection is set flaky test detection if we can switch it off if we want to do but uh, by default I've chosen the system detection we can also have custom detection custom detection is when VS test does not uh, do the detection for us that means that uh, values that we saw in VS test task they won't apply so we have to do our own logic it could be say a PowerShell script which identifies certain conditions and then marks that test as uh, flaky using REST API uh, whatever the logic but if we select that option that's up to us to decide uh, we can also select certain pipelines which will uh, have flaky test enabled so for example if we have high priority or critical pipelines we don't want to have flaky test at all we can disable in those uh, the other options are the flaky test should be part of the test percentage or not we can check that as well and users can uh, allow users to mark tests as flaky this is something which is not enabled by default and because it is enabled if we go back to our uh, test test run you can actually select one of the tests select this one not flaky I can select and mark it as flaky uh, I ideally I would say disable it and I would not let users do that so if you refresh it now and go back into the test you can't mark it as flaky anymore so by default, I would say let Azure DevOps decide for you. But if, if you do need flaky marking by yourself or your team members, then go ahead and do it. Uh, that's, the, that's all from me. The flaky test has been identified and it's up to us how we fix that or how we improve the test. Thank you very much for watching.